output is a shade of what its power was once upon a time. So, the, in the last 30 years, we have seen that change is constant. Hai, the velocity of change is high, and if people don't act on the change, companies are wiped out, which have huge stakes. The impact for human beings is very collateral damage is huge. I think Xerox IBM is another example. IBM, you know, mainframe, they didn't see the change. Look at the way Apple has come. You know, leapfrog. I mean, it has caught the imaginations of us. We love that the leapfrog of continuous enhancements, improvements and changes with the products that they bring which delight us. And those are the organizations are thriving in these VUCA challenging times. Or else dinosaurs ko humne dekha hai, you know, they're gone. And it would happen for organizations, it would happen for people for not adapting to. I bring in one notion. Jo technological change hai, you know, just concentrate with me on this quantity of change and this is the time. So the technological change jo hai, just rasta se jo mobile phone ka evolution hai, that has been exponential. Har teen mahine, har che mahine mein, there is something new that is being added, ke aapne jo naya, badiya Samsung ya Apple iPhone uh, uh, i5 and i6 version kharida hai, che mahine ke baad, your son is saying, dad, now there's some other features around. It needs of thars a change for that. Technological change. That is going exponentially. But organizations are changing very, very slow. They refer to logarithmic change because they're only because organizations are run by people. They have attitudes, behaviors. To change Agar ye building change karna chate, I mean, I must say, this is one of the finest uh, conference venue I, I see. Uh, I'm very pleasantly uh, happy to see this one in Nagpur. But what I say is, the, uh, uh, the speed of change that is happening around us is so enormously that organizations may systems rehte hain, processes rehte hain, incentives are linked to the way we behave. So it's so much difficult for people to and therefore it is more uh, logarithmic. I go to the story. Bohat piyari kahani hai. Sirf das minute ki hai. So I will not take uh, too much of time but you will have some wonderful lessons from this. Main, I like to tell you we go Nagpur is 48 degrees. We go to Antarctica minus 48 South Pole we are going, you are gonna, uh, is there anybody who has actually read uh, Iceberg is Melting? So you will really enjoy, these are nothing new, but something that we can learn from the characters and behaviors of individuals when they are put in a situation of change. Kis tarike se insan ki sochne ki jo mindset hai, that is uh, resist. Newton's law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Aap kahen ke change karo, nahi. So we're gonna look at that. Is kahani mein ek kirdar hai, that is Fred. Fred ki personality hai, wo har dam switched on hai. Switched on is, he knows what is change happening, kya ho ra hai. He is critically observing things in his neighborhood. Majority of people don't do that. Okay? So that's a very unique character of Job, dekhe. Second character is of Alice. Alice hai uski boss. Or no nonsense, Alice wants to listen to Fred, jo wo problems bata raha hai. Or hamare irgiz bhi hai, kuch jo no nos hai. Koi bhi cheej hum kahe to kehte hai, chalta hai yaar, what, what the hell, why are you worried, why are you creating this, uh, uh, hype around 
Nothing will happen. We have lived here for years. Nothing will change. So what are those? Who are those kind of characters? And who are our guardians? How? And then, what are those steps they follow of changing their thinking process of how they live? Okay. So it's a beautiful one. Everyone, 
This calls for a general assembly of the colony. No! It would be very bad to worry them. We don't want to panic anyone. We must keep this a secret! I have an idea. Would you give me a few minutes, please? Fred went quickly down the mountain and arrived minutes later with a glass bottle. Let's fill this bottle with water, seal it, and leave it in the ice overnight. Then tomorrow we can see if it's broken by the force of expanding water as it freezes. If I am correct, the bottle will be broken. Let's do it. We'll meet here tomorrow morning. The next morning they found the bottle broken. Oh. I'm convinced. We have to do something about this. Let us call a general assembly of the colony. And with that, the Penguins started the change leadership process with step one. Establishing a sense of urgency. Clearly, our iceberg is in danger. But I am confident we will find a solution. We need to act quickly. The next step was step two, creating the guiding coalition. A diverse team of five penguins was given the task of finding a solution. Lewis, Alice, Fred, Buddy, and Professor, who was the smartest penguin in the colony. Each had different strengths, and together, they were the best team for the job. Their task was step three of the change leadership process, developing a change vision. I've got an idea. Let's move to the center of Antarctica, where ice is thicker and stronger. We will be too far from the water. How will we get fish? What about using super glue to hold the iceberg together? <laughs> That's very funny. Look, up there, the seagull. It can't fly forever. It must have a home somewhere. It could be very lost, but it doesn't seem to be afraid. What if moving from one place to another is just the way it lives? Like a nomad. I can almost see how we might live. We'd learn to move around. We wouldn't try to fix melting icebergs. We would just face up to the fact that what sustains us can't go on forever. Our founder had this same idea when he moved our colony to this iceberg years ago. This sounds like our best shot. Let's inform the others. Their next step was number four, communicating the vision for buy-in. Lewis called a general assembly again to tell all of the new strategy. Since Buddy was the best storyteller, he was chosen to tell the story of the seagull. Then, Lewis addressed the crowd. We are not chained to this piece of ice. Let it melt and break. We will find other places to live that are safer. Although many penguins were relieved to hear this, many were still skeptical. So Alice came up with the idea of putting slogans on ice posters to win over the support of the colony. They worked hard to communicate the new vision of a nomadic life. Then they moved the plan forward with step five, empowering broad-based action. A scout team should go and look for another iceberg. Assemble a team and get ready. Yes, sir. Of course, it didn't go smoothly at first. Arguments broke out among the scouts, but Lewis dealt with them in a straight and direct way, keeping the focus on the main task. Then Nono started forecasting storms to discourage the scouts and lower morale. Lewis told Nono that his forecasting services are not needed at this time. Many of the penguins, particularly the young ones, were scared about the upcoming move. Buddy asked the teachers of the colony to speak about bravery to these young penguins. He inspired them to come up with Tribute to Our Heroes Day for when the scouts return. Next, they needed to act and make some progress. This is step six, generating short-term wins. The strong, bright, and highly enthusiastic scouts jumped into the water and searched for a new iceberg that would be good enough for them to move to. My life was boring. Scouting is fun! I will do this for the colony! My family will be so proud of me! When the brave scouts finally returned, they were tired and hungry, but they were greeted with a hero's welcome. They were given medals and food. They told amazing tales about the sea, about swimming long distances, and about new icebergs they had seen. As happy as everyone was to have the successful trip completed, it was no time to rest. They pressed onward with step number seven, never letting up. 
The next day, a second group of scouts went out and found the best iceberg for their new home. This iceberg has everything we need. A tall snow wall and good fishing sites. During the migration, our young and old can rest along the way on small icebergs. Let's waste no time. Start the migration before winter hits. The colony moved to the new home. The move was chaotic at times, but with Lewis's leadership and Buddy's encouragement, they arrived safely on the new iceberg. However, they still needed to take one last step. Number eight, incorporating changes into the culture. Although the new iceberg was solid and safe, they decided to move again the year after to an even better iceberg. They learned that to survive, constant change must become part of their culture. We can all learn something from the fable of these penguins. Is your organization safe? Are you sure that your iceberg is not melting? Here is a review of the change leadership process that the penguins used. Step one, establishing a sense of urgency. Step two, creating the guiding coalition. Step three, developing a change vision. Step four, communicating the vision for buy-in. Step five, empowering broad-based action. Step six, generating short-term wins. Step seven, never letting up. And step eight, incorporating changes into the culture. Think about these steps and how they work for our clever penguins. They can help you embrace change and keep you ahead of your melting iceberg. He talked about uh, change management nearly 20, 25 years ago. But until today, we see the evidence suggests that two out of three change efforts fail. 70% failure rates. Why is that? Because we humans are very complex. Systems, processes change, take place much faster. Humans are not penguins, that's also part of it. Uh, I, I think we are resisting change so much that system process changes much faster, but then when it comes to changing the human behavior, understanding the psychology of what change we need to do in order to motivate and inspire humans to bring about that change, it's possible. I mean, you know. Egyptians made uh, the pyramids, the great pyramids, the uh, Persians and the Indians made the Taj Mahal. They were brilliant minds, even in those days. So when they are mobilized, you are able to change and motivate them, you can bring about that change. I, I think I'll, not, I'll skip these uh, lessons part because that has been already uh, talked about. I'd just like to refresh on the eight steps process. Um, most organizations are not able to create, they are very good in creating sense of urgency. Actually, the best CEOs come and they refer to, I have had 500 million loss and throw the problem onto the table because there's so much of complacency at the leadership team, at the middle level managers, as well as at the associate levels, they don't see boss ki problem, eh? what the hell, why should I worry? Okay, there's no sense of that urgency part. I think when they create the teams, task force bana diye, paach bande, 
but they don't give them enough power to influence, to mobilize, to bring about that change because nobody wants to listen to the coalition team. The coalition team does not have the enough decision-making power because the boss was boss has only given to lead the task force but not given enough decision-making power and hence many organizations and many change efforts don't succeed. I think creating a vision that some of the change vision could be 360 degree different from that of what the current gold standard is. And jab bhi aap kuch cheez alag karna chahein, to in organizations you have associates, colleagues, they like to pull him down. Bad jao yaar, why you are raising the unnecessary, creating trouble for all of us. We want to go. Let the boss and the leadership team manage. I think that's the attitude at an associate level. So what change can we bring about in the behaviors so that they are mobilized and they pride themselves that this is my company. I'm a stakeholder. My ship is sinking. That cultural change is where the gaps are, why the change efforts fail. I think once they've created the vision, the vision is with the top HR professionals and the consultants who are working, they've crafted a beautiful strategy, but the people sitting, the office boy, the uh, um, secretarial support, the person who is the face of the organization, personal assistant, knows nothing. There's a huge disconnect, and hence the change efforts don't yield the kind of desired results. They don't empower others to act. I mean, in this beautiful penguin story where uh, the penguins by nature don't like to uh, give their food. So they gave an incentive that for every scout who goes will get two fish as against one fish on the table of each one. Give them a hero's welcome. Give them encouragement, a pat on the back, short-term wins. Maggie ka bhi bahut chal raha hai huge noise level around and uh, the person who was a drug inspector involved says I did it but my boss took it away he says it's my job I did it and it's in the press water disaster it's not yeah it happens you know but what I'm trying to refer is do we have courage to say, well, you know, this job is doctor's job, not mine. He needs to be, the silent hero needs to be given an opportunity and the spotlight under him, give a pat, just a recognition. I think we don't do that enough in organizations. And we declare victories very fast. Sir, the event was a grand success. And there are huge disconnects. They don't close the sack, a rope around the sack. I think, and last but not the least is internalizing the cultural change, you know. It's uh, about the default nature of Subhah, what you will do if you're put in a situation is your default nature. Because that is how, not what you wear the hat when you are in office, in your company, uh, it's internalizing that change process. And I think Penguins told us some beautiful uh, from the story is that uh, uh, they uh, took the vision of being a nomad, brave decision, instead of fixing it with glue or going to the center of Antarctica, uh, they said, let's change the way we live. And I think that's the powerful one which actually uh, which can actually make the di huge difference between success and a failure. I refer to, I highlighted on some of the common errors that most organizations do on complacency, uh, failure to give enough power to the guiding coalition team, 
underestimating the power of vision, under communicating. No communication is enough. You want verbatim your office boy, your attendant, if he can say what's the mission of the company or the vision of the organization. It's not just on the wallpapers and nice things to have uh, which we pride. Uh, you know, in my previous organization, we actually made it a culture where verbatim we come from different parts of the world, but everybody can say and internalize the vision of the company that we work with. I think that's something that uh, that's a change. And I think um, not uh, uh, removing the obstacles, failure to create the short-term wins, encouragement, um, reward, not just monetary part, because monetary will not take you further. It's recognition among the peers. I think that we don't do enough. Which, why should I take that extra mile? And um, neglecting to anchor the cultural change. I think that's, those are some of the key things that comes to my mind. And I think uh, this is a beautiful last two slides, uh, which I uh, refer to the gold nuggets of, because humans are different, to mobilize and to encourage human change in behavior. You know, system processes very easily change. Kar but to internalize that change in behavior of humans, there are, McKinsey has actually come up with a four-step process. And one is telling a compelling story. The reason for change. What's the point of changing? If people can tell that the reason I do this change in an organization is because of X, Y, and Z, and then people believe it, is the key. I think that compelling story. So most times what happens is the CEO, the big boss, and the agency they work with, they craft beautiful language, beautiful, compelling story. I like that story to be Dr. Ashmet's story, Dr. Patil's story, my own story, internalizing. Bringing those nuances, because language is not hum, her insan doesn't have the same command of the language. So we have that umbrella, or how do we bring that compelling story for, how does everybody else in the organization resonate with that story? I think that's the key. Then role modeling. The boss, boss ne to bana di hai, compelling story, but the boss is not part of it. People are looking at him. His behaviors, his actions are actually not matching to what he is telling us to do. People you look up to, your role models in the organization, they are not. I think that's another big reason. So, when you are in that change journey, as a CEO, as an executive leader, you need to ensure that you are giving right verbal, non-verbal, messages which are in perfect harmony because people can see it's a lip service or is it a deep rooted change. So this role modeling is key. The team leaders who do that ripple effect, they need to actually internalize. Reinforcing mechanisms. So change story ban gai hai, compelling story is ready, but Everything else has not changed, which are obstacles. Incentives are still linked to 9 to 5 time. Incentives are linked to making those X number of calls or whatever that event. But they are not being changed, so removing those obstacles are key. And capability building, okay, you must recognize that kuch cheeje change karne ke liye kuch capabilities bhi deni hai. I think those capabilities gap assessment needs to happen in order to bring about that. So if we are able to do those four steps, compelling story, role modeling, reinforcing, mechanisms and capability building if required based on the gaps, then the chances of success are much, 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 much higher. I leave you, recognize, adopt change faster. 
because it's not knowing it. Don't be a laggard to know it when the rest of the world has moved on because that will be